Hey, hey, what section is this? Hey, wait, what's going on? What are we doing? What are we doing? Hey, 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 who, who said what? Whoa, what did they say? Is that Mr. Modern? What's going on? We should probably listen. <laughs> anyway, sorry. Hey, I found this video. It's actually kind of funny. You're probably not going to listen to me as I'm talking here. But um, to intro this part of the video, we're talking about Part C of the Altitude on Hypotenuse Theorem. And you guessed it with all the legs on the uh, video there. It's leg day. Uh, we're... We did altitude with part B, strictly altitude with the altitude on a partner's theorem. This video, really quick, is going to show you how to set up a proportion dealing with the legs of a right triangle. <laughs> Good timing. Um, if we are given an altitude drawn to that partner's of a right triangle. So, I don't know what's going on there, but they're doing a cool little dance and uh, it made me laugh. Anyways, I'm going to pause this video. Let's rock and roll and get to some... <laughs> More important things, shall we? All right. As a friendly reminder, reminder, there's your right triangle. We got the right angle. Wonderful. And remember, these two things here are called the legs. That's what we're going to be, guys, focused on today with those two things: uh, the leg on the left and the leg on the right, or whatever, wherever they are. Remember, this is the hypotenuse, and we had drawn this thing straight down here, right down to the hypotenuse. That was the altitude on hypotenuse, and that's what develop this entire theorem. So we got section A, we got section B. Remember, this is section B here where we talked about the altitude. To the hypotenuse is the mean proportional. That's why these two things over here are h and h, where the h is the altitude. And x and y are your extremes. It's the segments of the hypotenuse. So the overall hypotenuse, remember, was a, b. The little segments are x and y. So we're, again, focused on leg day today. So here we go. What I would do on your sheet of paper that you have, or just your notes, you see what just flew in there, that guy right there. No pun intended with fly and the flamingos. Ha <laughs> ha. Although it did work nice. This section right here, or that, that part of the overall triangle is one of the legs. Label that as A. And then this section over here, or this other part of the other triangle, um, or the overall triangle, is another leg. Label that as B. And then the overall entire hypotenuse of the right triangle, label that as C. Because the A, B, and C will come into play here with the wording of the theorem. So this is part C of the altitude on hypotenuse theorem. And as you see it flying in here, here's what it says. The leg of the given right triangle is the mean proportional between the hypotenuse of the given right triangle and the segment of the hypotenuse adjacent to the leg. Wow, what a mouthful. What a wording. Blah, 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 blah. Here's the deal. When you look at this first one that pops up here, I'll explain it to you. Because look, we got A, A, Y, and C. Look at where they are represented in the picture. And here's how it breaks down. I'll get some things up here to draw. Okay. So what you see here is the leg, which means A, that leg length is the mean proportional. It's the mean, so here you go. It's the mean proportional, the leg length, is the mean proportional between the entire hypotenuse, which we said is C, that's why we put C right there, in the other extreme, or in one of the extremes, and the segment of the hypotenuse that's adjacent to that leg that we're dealing with. Wow. That's this piece right there. That's the little piece of the hypotenuse that is adjacent to the leg that we're dealing with. That's why that Y went right in there. Okay? So that's that. So let's go over and get to the other side of the right triangle's leg, if you will. So now we're looking at this side. It's still the same wording, guys. Check this out. If I draw this on here, you'll see. So the leg, we're talking leg, it's this thing. The leg is the mean proportional. So there you go. The leg length is the mean proportional between two things, the extremes. And what goes in the extremes? The entire hypotenuse. That's why we put C down here, guys. Wonderful. And the segment of the hypotenuse that's adjacent to the leg. What? Again, that's this piece. This is the segment of the hypotenuse that is closest to the leg length that we're dealing with. That's why X went right there. So there is your theorem. It's exactly that. Nothing more to it. Piece of cake. Um, but those are the ones. Now, if you want to look at how this kind of comes about, I can show you the same thing that I did before. Check this out. When you know that these things are similar, which we certainly do, here's how the theorem works. I don't know why I think this is really cool, but um, you probably do too, I'm sure. So you're looking at this. Here you go. So you got, um, oh, where am I looking? Sorry. So we're looking over here. Okay. So we're going to have DB. Check this out. DB. That guy corresponds over here to CB. Well, if you look at what DB is, that actually is Y. So we would go Y is to CB, which happens to be A, length A, it's the leg length, 
So that's the one ratio. And since these triangles are similar, we know they're proportional. The, the corresponding sides are proportional. So I'll look at the other side. Well, the other side happens to be this. Well, check this out. I'll change colors. Hold Okay, so you look at the other side. You got CB, which matches up to AB. Well, CB happens to be, oh, look at that, happens to be the leg length. And AB over here happens to be the entire hypotenuse. Well, doesn't that look familiar? That thing right there is exactly that proportion. By the way, I could certainly show you the other one. Um, let me redraw this. Beep. So I could show you the other one, too, where we just focus on these two triangles, but you get the idea. That is how the proportion comes about. It's really cool. So we're going to be able to apply that, um, whether we got the altitude that we're trying to find, which we talked about in Part B, or whether we got the actual, um, go back to this, yep, whether we got both of these legs right here, it doesn't matter. You'll be able to set up your proportion and figure it out from there. So I'm pumped, man, um, and ladies and girls and boys and whatever. Um, but here we go. Do you think it's possible? Do you think? Do you think? Do you think we can get to some other examples? <laughs> Whoa, what's that? Maybe that was the flamingo saying it. You betcha. <laughs> Let's get to some examples. Okay, so let's use this altitude on hypotenuse theorem involving the leg. So here we go. Let's just focus on this leg for now. So if we're looking at that leg, here's what it says. Look back in your notes, but you'll see how this works. That means this. If that's the leg, then x, I'll put it up here, then x is the mean proportional y x because it's like the leg length is the mean proportional between two different things one is the entire hypotenuse so that would be 26 that's the entire hypotenuse and the piece of the hypotenuse that's closest to the leg that we're dealing with and that happens to be 16 not 10 16 is the closest piece of the entire hypotenuse that is adjacent closest to next to the actual leg we're dealing with so 16 goes right in here so whenever you actually solve this when you do Mises strings product theorem you would get um, x squared woo, equals I think it's 416 I do believe so when you take the square well it's weird when you take the square root of both sides remember it is plus or minus but really we're just going to disregard the actual negative because we're talking about the side length of a triangle so the negative disappears which so is the positive one so we got positive 416 now when you break that up it actually goes the biggest perfect square into 416 is 16 weird so 16 and 26 are the two that it goes down to so this guy would simplify down to 4 root 26 and that right there guys is your final answer for that particular leg length right there Okay, now what if we're actually trying to find the um, the length of the other triangle or the other the other leg? So why? So if I look at that one, I'll change colors. Let's go with this. So I'm looking for that leg length. Well, that means this. The the or the uh, theorem says the leg length is the mean proportional. So since I'm dealing with that leg length, it goes in as the means between the entire hypotenuse, which is this whole thing. So 26 goes right back up there. But now this changes because since 10 is the little part of the uh, hypotenuse that's adjacent to the leg I'm dealing with, I'm not dealing with x anymore, I'm dealing with y. So 10 goes in as the other extreme. Sweet, so there's your proportion. Solve it up, you get y squared equals 260. Take the square root of both sides, which gives you y equals square root of 260. Yeah. When you break up 260, the biggest perfect square that goes into 260 is actually just a 4. Just a lonely old 4. So then you break that up into square root of 4 times the square root of 65. It's the biggest one that works. Weird. Which means then your final answer, guys, is 2 root 65. Ugly answer. Yep, but that's the answer. That is the length of the leg in that particular right triangle due to part C of the altitude on a partner's theorem. Next example, check this out. So what you're looking at now, same thing. You're looking at leg 16 right here. You're looking at this whole hypotenuse and this part of the leg. Well, since 16 is the leg length, that bad boy goes right there. Let me copy that again. And it goes right up here. So 16 goes in as the means. Now listen, back to this example, we were actually trying to find the leg. So that's why y and y went in there. But now we're given the leg length. Doesn't matter. I don't care what's given to you. Like I said with the altitude, 
just put that thing, whether it be a variable or a number or whatever, that goes in as the means. What goes in as the extremes? Well, the entire hypotenuse, which is x, the whole thing, that's what it's represented here, and the little piece of the hypotenuse, which is 8, that's adjacent to the leg I'm dealing with. So 8, boop, will go over there. So that's exactly what it looks like. Now, when you solve this bad boy out, means extremes product theorem, you actually don't get an x squared, so there's no reason to do um, square root. But you would then finally get an answer, which you can work it out yourself. You would get x equals 32. So that would be the answer for this entire hypotenuse. Now, quick question. What if it was just asking you for hs? Could you find it? Well, sure. Just simply take 32 and subtract 8, and you get 24. Watch this. What if it actually asked you now to find the length of the altitude? Could you find it? I shouldn't use x. Let me back that up. Could you find it? Let's use w. I'll change it. Woohoo. Could you find the length of the altitude? Sure you could. Why? Because now I'll go back to part b of the theorem. You got individual piece of hypotenuse, individual piece of hypotenuse, so you could set up a proportion with that as the means, and you could rock and roll from there. How cool is that? Last example. Now this is going to be cool because what you're seeing over here to the left is a radical as one of the sides. Ooh, buddy boy, that's pretty cool. So if I, wait, that's the leg length. I don't care what it is. I don't care if it's a radical or a number or a letter. Let's take that 2 root 3, and it goes in there, and it goes in there. It goes in as the means. Perfect. What goes in as the extremes then, guys? Oh, the entire length of the hypotenuse. That's one of them, so 6 goes right there. And the little piece of the hypotenuse that's adjacent to the leg which happens to be x. That's, apparently that's what I'm trying to find in this example. That's cool. So let me, that didn't copy, so no problem. I'll put an x right there. Now here's a tricky one. I'll show you this one, although you should be pretty good at this by now. Means extremes product theorem gives you 6x. When you take the means times each other, that gives you this. 2 root 3 times 2 root 3. Now keep in mind, remember things that are out of jail? You can actually multiply those together. So the 2's you can put together, multiply those to get a 4. And the 3's you can multi together, multiply together because they're in jail. That would give you the square root of 9. So when you take this bad boy, simplify the square root of 9, that gives you a 3. Take that times the 4, that gives you a 12. So technically, you have 6x equals 12. Which means then your final answer, guys, lovely, 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 would just be 2. So there you go. Now, do you see what I see? my big campus question that's right go into your my big campus and you're gonna find this picture with a couple things given to you you're gonna be given that the overall hypotenuse is 12 you're gonna be given this leg is 6 and it's time to find a couple things first thing you're gonna be finding is that little piece right there pretty simple you just did one just like it and then you're gonna be asked to find that leg length Ooh, you might need to think a little bit how to get that guy and then you're gonna be asked to find how to find the altitude length and you're going to be asked to find that piece of the hypotenuse. Now, you don't have to do it in that order. You don't have to do it in alphabetical order. But my suggestion would be to start with X because that's about the only way that you know how right now to do it. You can do it other ways. But I'd start by finding X, like I had showed you right there, and then rock and roll and find the rest of them in any order you want to because once you find X, the rest of them kind of fall into place. I look forward to seeing your answers and helping you guys with this stuff in class. You guys are awesome. We'll talk to you later. Peace.